Alongside the Changelings campaign, we're also getting a bunch of new Siege units from the main man himself, all the way over to whatever this thing is. Let's go through each one and how to use it to get the best results in your battles. First up, we of course have the Changeling. In his base form, the Changeling is a decent all-round lord. Mid melee stats, decent magical and fire damage, though not overly armor piercing. It's also moderately tough with some armor and some decent resistance. The real power is of course that lore of Siege that you can use to drop all kinds of destruction, terror and mayhem onto his enemies to slay them. Game fine versus low damage and defense enemies, bonus if they rely only on resistance so he can deal more great damage of his own. Avoid high and especially magical damage at all costs as it will go down in moments if he gets focused. And of course, use those casts wherever needed to bring yourself closer to victory. Now you may have noticed I said base form, and that is of course because the Changeling can transform into basically any other legendary lord or hero in the game if he's unlocked their form on the campaign map. If you're wondering how exactly to do this, check out my campaign guide linked somewhere on screen now. All you have to do is hit his ability in battle and you'll transform into your chosen form, gaining all of their strengths and weaknesses. Once you have the right skills, you'll even gain the target spells and abilities, so functionally be exactly the same as the target themselves. So you can choose to tear the front lines to pieces as Scarbrand, provide necromantic support as Heinrich or sneak around enemy back lines as Snitch. Obviously I can't tell you how to play every single legendary character here as that would take about 3 weeks, but today I've made guides for almost everyone, both campaign and battle, so feel free to check those out to find out how to play everyone in this Goliath game. The bottom line is pick a form that fits your needs and army composition and transform back and forth as you make use of each form's strengths and weaknesses. I'd advise a powerful battler since the base form is already a powerful caster, that way you get the best of both worlds, all in one lord. Next up we have the Blue Scribes, the first of two new legendary heroes coming to Siege slash General Chaos. And again, I've covered both of these upcoming legendary heroes in the campaign video, so if you want more information about how to unlock them in the campaign, then check out my campaign guide video. The Blue Scribes are another incredibly unique unit. They sit atop their flying chariot and use scrolls of sorcery to provide them with a steady rotation of random spells from any lore of magic that you've unlocked using their skill tree in the game. When you start battle, they'll be assigned a set, and the moment you cast one, you get a whole new set to use to your heart's content. This makes them another hard unit to advise how to use, since it really depends on what spells you end up with. You can rain fire onto your enemies, buff your own troops, debuff enemies, and anything else you can do with magic, so you really have to look at the spells you've been given and decide what will work best with your specific situation and army. Outside of their spells, they don't have a ton more utility. Their primary use is as a ranged unit with decent range and high but not overly armor piercing damage, so targeting less armored units is their best option, especially if they're relying on resistance, since their magical damage will cut straight through. Also be sure to aim for single entities more often than not, as the damage will be more concentrated onto a single target rather than being spread out throughout several entities, and also if it's something large, you have a much higher chance of hitting. Aside from this, I'd keep them out of melee since they have low stats and a large hitbox, so will go down extremely fast if and when they get pinned down. Do not be fooled by that massive weapon strength. Neither the melee stats nor the charge bonus are great, so it's just not worth it if you can help it. Keep them firing and cast him from a range, and they should do great for you. Our second new chaotic legendary hero is Echold Brass. Echold is just about as straightforward a fighter as you can get. He has outstanding melee stats, amazing armor piercing damage, with a bonus versus infantry, and stupidly high armor. Get him into the front lines alongside your troops fighting basically anything, and he'll come out on top. That's pretty much all there is to it. As long as he's not caught out and picked apart by ranged, he should do well. Even if he gets surrounded in melee, the damage he'll put out and the insane defense mean he'll take out a crap load of enemies before he goes down, if he even does. And if that incredible melee power wasn't enough, he also has a number of great abilities. Thorn's aura reduces the speed and leadership of nearby enemy units, so he's great for chasing down enemies and making sure they don't come back anytime soon. Windblade is a great magical missile spell for softening up targets before combat, with decent damage and a lasting aura to deal damage in an area after the initial impact. This is great when targeted on a single unit in the middle of others, since the impact damage will deal more concentrate damage to your target and rack up a little extra to everything around it. And lastly, Breath of Life lets him heal and recover vigor constantly, no matter what. Yeah, it's not a ton, but it is always happening in battle, plus he has the barrier, plus all the armor, plus the melee defense, so he's going to take a while to go down and keep coming back no matter what. Once you unlock him, just get in an army and fighting, as you really cannot go wrong as long as you use him. Next up we have the Sangors, and these are of course a variant of the Beastmen Gors, and actually have been added to the Beast roster alongside Siege. Compared to regular Gors, they're a lot more defense focused with a ton more armor, as well as increases to defense, leadership charge bonus, and the addition of the barrier. This is at the cost of some minor speed, attack, and weapon strength, but not much, so it's a pretty great trade-off. In the Siege roster, they bridge the gap between Marauders and Forsaken slash Chaos Warriors pretty well, offering a decently cheaper price point while still being considerably tougher than earlier offerings. They make for great tankier front lines units in the early to mid game since that much armor is going to stop basically anything non-armor piercing, giving missiles, magic and monsters plenty of time to deal all the real damage. Obviously their own damage isn't bad, but giving them support is absolutely the way to go for maximum efficiency. They also have the Arcane Charge passive which increases their damage further, the more spells are cast during battle, so spamming some cheaper spells is a great way to get a little more damage on your front lines if you really need it. Add on the Vanguard deployment, great speed and primal fury, and you have a solid unit that I'd welcome in my army anytime. 
Lastly, we come to the beasts and monsters. First up, we have the Cockatrice. This bosses the Cinch flying roster excellently, bringing a larger, more powerful single entity presence that's been sorely lacking up until now. It's essentially a super buffed up Feral Manticore, at least stats wise. It has great speed with the flying and excellent damage that's armor piercing, poison, and magical. The melee stats aren't bad, but of course defense isn't amazing alongside armor, so you want to choose targets carefully to keep it alive. Your best options are of course backline since they'll have basically no damage of their own, meaning it'll be pretty safe to take them out to keep your army safe. You can go for frontline's troops, just make sure you have other units fighting them at the same time to divert some attention away. And make use of cycle charging for tons of damage whilst keeping them safe. 40 charge isn't nothing, and with that speed and weapon strength, they're going to feel it. Lastly, it of course causes fear and terror, so enemy leadership will plummet the moment it hits the scene. And if that wasn't bad enough, the petrifying gaze passive will slow nearby enemies and reduce their attack, making running from or fighting this thing into a losing battle 90% of the time. As long as it's fighting something, it'll be doing a great job. Just be aware of the larger hitbox when navigating enemy ranged and melee troops to keep it alive. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Mutalith Vortex Beast. The Mutalith is the new endgame monster for the scene truster. Not only is it the most expensive unit, but it's the biggest and likely most expensive to create, because wow, that model is complicated. Does it justify the price of this DLC? I think that's still up for debate. In combat, it is a great frontlines beast with excellent melee stats, great armor with armor piercing, anti-large and magical, meaning not much can stand against it and survive. It also has moderately high speed and a nice chunk of charge bonus if you want to send it sprinting around the map to get damage, you absolutely can do that. As well as high damage, it's actually decently tanky with the usual barrier, but also a huge amount of health, high armor, and honestly, not even that bad defense, like melee infantry have worse in some cases. Of course, it is on the larger side, so if it gets totally focused either from a range or in melee, it's going to struggle, so keep it with other units for the best results. Outside of flat fighting, it has a few more powerful effects and abilities. Of course, fear and terror for constantly sapping leadership is never a bad thing. On top of this, it also comes with three other chaotic abilities. Gift of Mutation grants melee attack to all nearby allied units, so getting them fighting with your other front lines is definitely the way to go. Aura of Mutation deals direct damage to nearby enemy units, so just existing near enemies is going to get you value. And finally, Rites of Transformation is a direct damage in an area, which also applies disoriented to affected units to make them easier for you to take out. All this adds up to a unit which will dominate the front lines, and as long as you give it plenty of other units to support it and keep it alive, you can't really go wrong. Like I said, just avoid letting it get targeted by range because this bad boy is a pretty big target. We also have three new regiments of renown. We have the Sour Guts, which are a pink horrors of Siege units, and they gain more HP, and the Sour Discharge passive ability. The Shrieking Sky Rays are a Screams of Siege units and gain the Lamprey's Bite ability. And Ace on the Fallen is a Mutalex Vortex Beast and gains the Maelstrom Change ability, which deals spreading direct damage from a targeted enemy to a maximum of five. And of course, because we've got new units, we need new army compositions, especially for Siege, because they have not been covered since they unlocked all of the Warriors of Chaos roster, so let's get into it. One thing also changed in this patch alongside the DLC is the reworking of the tiers for units with the introduction of tiers 4 and 5. So instead of doing 5 comps, and instead of doing the comps for tiers 1, 2, and 3, I'm going to make comps for tiers 1 and 2, 3, and then 4 and 5, since that's pretty much how you unlock them in the campaign whilst building up your settlements. And as I said, since last time I covered Siege, they gained all their new Warriors of Chaos units, so get ready for some fresh comps. In our early game composition, we're going to be leading our armies with a Herald of Siege with the Lore of Siege. I don't think you can be the classic for leading your armies. The powerful spellcasters and the Lore of Siege is just an obvious choice since it's on brand and also pretty damn powerful. The range damage is great for some extra support, just keep them out of melee and you should have a great time. Eventually, we're looking to get that evolution to the Exalted Lord of Change, so grind that XP as fast as you can. For the front lines, surprisingly, at this stage, we can get two Halberd Chaos Warriors of Siege and five Chaos Warriors of Siege. Now, I was surprised these were such a low tier since they feel a little later on or more expensive in campaign, but that could just be in my head. With that in mind, though, a good alternate is actually the new Sangors, and I'm not just saying that because they're new, since they're just about the best tanky front line you can get at this stage outside of Chaos Warriors. But since Chaos Warriors are available, we are going to go with those in this comp. You're getting a great tankiness, and that's all I'm really looking for. The Halberds are there to tag any large enemies and protect your flanks, but aside from that, everyone will be holding the line for mainly your missiles and magic to do all the damage at this stage. Speaking of which, for our range, we're going to go with 5 pink horrors and 3 flamers. This mix of range will be able to take on all kinds of foes, whether it's infantry or something larger. The pink horrors are going to look to thin the herd and focus on less armor tags to soften them up before melee and carefully tag anything they can hit once the lines clash. They can fire over units' heads just fine, so they're going to take on that role. The flamers want to avoid units in combat with your own troops, like the plague, since friendly fire will happen and be devastating. Instead, focus on high priority tags you can find out in the open or anything massive like a mammoth, since they'll be able to get safe shots off without worrying about in any of your own troops. Their damage is outstanding, but their ammo is limited, so let off a couple of barrages at a time to wipe enemies out, and turn off fire at will, since they'll easily waste all their ammo in seconds if you forget about them. 
Boss gonna go with two Screamers. These are gonna focus on enemy backlines. Their damage is decent, but they're just too fragile to send against anything better than enemy ranged. So stick to enemy backlines, taking out threats before they can get value. If proper melee spot comes knocking, get them out of their ASAP as they will go down in moments against even moderate damage. Use both at once for hit and run to blitz a single target down and repeat this until all units are taken care of. If you have to get them on the front lines, just make sure they're going for the back of the front lines to sandwich them between your own troops and have some support whilst they're there. And lastly, we're going to close this out with two Marauder Horsemen of Siege. Lastly, we're taking these guys to stick on Skirmish and get some steady missile damage onto enemies from the backs and sides. If Horus can't get an angle, these will provide enough support against most foes. Just make sure you're targeting low armor to ensure their damage gets through. Coming to our mid-game composition, of course, still got that Herald of Siege, same as before, maybe on a mount at this point if you fancy it with a few more spells, but we're working towards that transformation, so get those levels as fast as you can. We're also going to pick up a Cultist of Siege for that Law of Fire, for even more destructive magic if your GPU can handle it. Later on, that summon will also come incredibly useful, so also grind levels to get through the good stuff as fast as you can. For the front lines, we're going to go with 6, Chosen of Siege, pretty much a direct upgrade, as tanky as you can get at this stage, so we'll hold the line just fine. Yes, we're losing the Halberds, but I believe it's worth the upgrade to Chosen, and then we can get the Halberds later. For the range, we're going to go with two Exalted Flamers and four Exalted Pink Horrors. Going for this ratio, since Exalted Pink Horrors will do the job against more or less anything but the toughest of targets. Flamers will focus on those toughest tags, especially single entities, to make the most of their limited but devastating range damage. Still, avoid targeting anything fighting your own troops with the Flamers, as the Friendly Fire will still be even more devastating this time. For a bit of Frontline's presence, we're going to go with four Chaos Spawn of Siege, straightforward monsters for the front lines to provide a little bit more damage. Yes, not the most armor-piercing or armoured themselves, but they're the best option we've got this tier, so here they stand. And closing out, we've got two cockatrice, co cockatrices? Cockatrice eye? Anyway, closing out with the cockatrices, so these are going to replace the screamers in seeking out enemy backlines and take them out before they can get value. They've got great stats and will do okay in the front lines, so taking out ranged will be a piece of cake, and you can get them into the thick of things in no time once all range is taken out, of course. And lastly, our end game composition. Finally, we've got the Exalted Lord of Change, and of course, they've still got the Lord of Siege. Get that transformation, then it's just Spell and Damage City. Now also decent ballads, so get them involved, we're safe to get just a little bit more value. That Cultist of Siege should be on a mount, and I'm going War Shrine every time to buff my units as much as possible, but it's going to be using those summons and spells as much as you can, so keep them safe from ranged and melee, since the size does make them a little bit of a dangerous target. For the front line, we are swapping out two of our Chosen of Siege for Halberd Chosen of Siege. Pretty much just to protect the flanks and focus large targets, still use them just the same to hold line and keep enemies still for your other damage. Got the same range lineup as before, and then our monsters are getting completely reworked. We've split our monsters up quite a bit, so let's go through why one at a time. Going with two Mutalifts, I mean it's obvious, it's new and it looks cool, but aside from that, it's an amazing frontlines monster with crazy damage as well as wacky effects. Spread the two out in your battle lines to maximise the coverage of their abilities, and of course the terror and damage, and keep it out for ranged and you should be all good. The soul grinders are here for these super long range artillery, so any far off threats can be softened up before they get too close. The damage is best used versus large single entities, so focus on these over everything else, and if they run out of ammo or you just need them to, get them in melee for a little more value. If your backlines get flanked, bring the soul grinders, they'll be able to fight off almost anything. And lastly, the Lords of Change will offer some flying magical support with their banned spells if their research has been completed, which it should be by the time you unlock them. So use their spells for a ton of added destruction in battle, and they're flying to take out enemy backlines. Now yeah, nothing else in the army can do it, so why not you cast in monsters? Just keep them safe from out of real combat, and they should do great. And that is how to play the Changeling, and I suppose Siege, with this latest DLC. Let me know what you think of the new units down in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and if you want to know how to play the Changeling in campaign, then check out this video to see all their new mechanics and features.